I wore my wife's dress, applied lipstick, did a stylish hairdo, wore all the accessories and captured many photos. Hi, my name is Tom and I'm 27 years old. I'm a theater actor by profession. My father runs an import and export business. My father always wanted me to be a part of his business, but since childhood, I loved watching theater acts and followed it. But the main reason to be part of the theater act was to become a woman, wearing their clothes and getting ready like them. Not only for the play, but in real life too. I love to be like a woman, but for intimacy, I always preferred men rather than women. I never got attracted to any women for their looks or figure, but I always followed what they wear and how they carry everything. Confused? But this is the truth. I am a cross-dresser. I'm fond of wearing ladies' clothes and I wish to like women. This is the reason I chose this profession. Before I continue further, I request you to subscribe to this channel. I don't know how this started, but even in childhood, I played the role of a female in any act or fancy dress competition. I love to do that. In the college's theater act, I was fascinated to do a lady's role. Then that would be becoming the stepsister of Cinderella or the evil fairy of Sleeping Beauty. I was never concerned with what role am I going to act in. I was just satisfied to do the role of lady character. Everyone in my family, friends, knew that I do act in such feminine role. But they never stopped me from doing this because no one knew the secret. Only my father was against me. He never liked what I did and was always forced to join his company. Nevertheless, he failed, but he succeeded in getting my marriage done with his business partner's daughter, Annie. I was 22 years old at the time. I knew that I can never keep Annie happy and I can't keep any kind of physical relationship with her. So I told her my secret before marriage and pleaded with her not to disclose it to anyone. Annie was very cunning and she was marrying me just for my father's property. She agreed that she won't disclose, but to do so, she demanded $100,000 monthly from me. I accepted her offer and we got married for our parents' sake. On the first night after marriage, Annie had worn a beautiful nightie. Wow, what a sexy outfit it was. Then without hesitating, I asked her if she has another nightie that I could borrow. She gave me a hot red colored nightie. I just couldn't stop myself from wearing that. I quickly went to change my clothes. Ah, oh, I was looking so pretty in it. I had a sound sleep that night. Just like that night, I repeated this occasionally. I also borrowed her makeup, perfume and dresses and asked her to click my photos. And she did all that I asked, but she charged me to do such stupid stuff. And this is how I was living my life with her. One day, my play was scheduled late at night. So I went home at midnight. When I opened my bedroom door, I saw Annie sleeping and besides her laptop was kept on the bed. I thought to keep her laptop aside and put a blanket over her. As I took the laptop, I saw many photos on it. The photos in the girl's dress which I had asked her to click. I looked over and I found that she had sold my photos on one of the websites for money. I immediately sent a request to that portal support team and requested to remove all the photos. And I granted them that I'll pay them all the amount they gave till now. I was red with anger. But as she was sleeping, I thought away till morning. Then I closed the browser, followed by the other open folders. There was one folder that had my photos, so I deleted them and closed the folder. There was one more folder open with many images. I was closing that too, but my eyesight saw a photo of Annie kissing a girl. I was just amazed to see that. Out of curiosity, I literally scrolled over to check the photos. There were many erotic photos of her with another girl. I felt awkward and I thought, is she hiding something from me? This thought made me check her laptop and I opened each folder and photos to reveal the truth. And finally, I found a pic which made clear that she is interested in girls. I kept her laptop beside her as it was before and waited for the next morning. As she woke up, I got a coffee for her. She was surprised by my behavior. I asked her, Annie, till now I gave you $100,000 every month, but I can't manage to give you a head. She replied, well, then your secret will be disclosed. I immediately question, how about your secret? What if I tell everyone that you are dating a girl? Her eyes remained open and she stared at me. She asked, ah, 
How did you know? I replied, Well, that doesn't matter. What matters is the money which I gave you. I need it back, else I'll tell your secret to everyone. And don't even dare to share my picture with anyone else, otherwise I'll expose you badly. Since then, we never interfered in each other's life. My theater life was going awesome. After five years, a new troupe of five actors and actresses joined. They were young and very talented. Among them, there was a girl named Emma. She was very innocent and a good actor. I loved every performance. Her act, expressions, gestures, narrating dialogue, all were excellent. Though I was a senior to her, I had many things to learn from her. She was jolly by nature. Her sense of humor was excellent. Once in the theater act, Emma and I were selected to perform a female duet dance, so we practiced together for long hours. Through these sessions, we got to know each other more. Many times, it happened that she saw me taking selfies in the female outfit. After practice, I never changed my clothes immediately. One day, she asked me, why do I take selfies in female outfits? I just changed the topic. That same day, at night, my wife Annie asked me to plan a baby. Baby? Have you gone crazy? I shouted. And he said, no, I'm not. I'm serious about it. I'm ready to have a relationship with you. Likewise, I replied, listen, Annie, this is not at all possible. She said, I don't know that. You don't have a choice. You either say yes or I'll tell your five-year-old secret to your parents. I was panicked and angry. I just went out of the room and banged the door. I went to the patio and sat for a while and started crying because Annie had asked me that which I can never give her. But I was confused. How can she be ready to have a relationship? Next early morning, I left home for the rehearsal. I changed my clothes to a female outfit and started ballet dancing. It gave me relaxation and I felt calm. As I stopped dancing, I saw Emma. She saw everything that I did. She asked, Tom, what happened? What are you doing? Why are you like this? I remained quiet. She came close to me and I just started crying. Then I just told her everything. She understands my feelings and said, Oh, that's okay. Everyone has the right to live as they want. Relax. I felt so good to hear this. I said, Someone in this world understands me. After going home, again, Annie started the same topic. This time, she told her intention. She wanted my father's properties and shares for her and the baby. Hence, she was forcing me. Listen to this. I again left home and stopped staying in the bedroom with her. I spent most of the time on the patio. One night, Emma messaged me. Hey, dream girl, why did you start all this? I replied, I just like doing it, so I do. And I felt like sending her some of my pics. I sent her and she started sending reactions through emoticons. Then she said, you look so pretty. She encouraged me to be what I am. The next day, when I met her, I told her about my wife and what she is up to. She is forcing me to have a baby. I was very sad and Emma hugged me tightly. I felt so relaxed. She told me in my years, not to worry, I will think of something which can help you. Then she moved her fingers on my cheek and left. I felt something different, which I never felt for anyone. I was so aroused and I could feel her. The same evening, Emma messaged me, telling me that she will solve my problem. I asked her, how? She just asked me to wait. The next morning in the rehearsal, I kept asking her what she has planned, but she didn't tell me anything. Just while leaving, she held my hand and told me, Trust me, you will be free, so take a chill pill. I wondered what she was talking about. That moment when she held my hand, my mind and my heart were all ready to accept what she was saying. I was feeling very close to her. That day, I didn't spend much time taking selfies. I changed my clothes quickly and left for home. I decided to convince Annie to adopt a baby. On the way home, I felt that I was aroused towards her. I felt that it would be just infatuation. But I realized that I love her and I wanted to tell her. As I reached home, I saw my family and friends have come home. There was some party going on. I asked him, why has this party been thrown? But rather than telling me anything, people started giving me gifts and asked me to open them. As I opened it, I found each gift had either a dress, a earring, makeup items, waxing kit. I was embarrassed and nervous too. Then my dad came and hugged me. He said, sorry, I never understood you. I have no problem accepting you for what you are and as you are. I looked at him in shock and I was ashamed of myself. Furthermore, 
I felt people have come to laugh at me and not support me. I thought Annie told everyone about me, but the culprit was Emma. She wanted to help me. She made the biggest mistake. She thought that I can't tell my parents about my reality, but she can. As she wanted to help me, so she did this. Suddenly, they turned on the projector and my photos of female dress started flashing. I was very ashamed of what happened and I ran from there and never went back home. Everyone tried to contact me, but I never entertained anyone. I was not able to face anyone. Then, I went to another city and joined another office and lived. On the other hand, Emma was regretting whatever she did and wanted one chance to explain to me. In my new office, there was a boy who plays guitar and his rock show was live on YouTube. While watching that, I found videos of real-life stories. I checked most of the stories and thought to express all my inner wounds. I wanted to throw out whatever was inside of me. So, I wrote the story and sent it to the channel. They accepted to make the story and released it. Luckily, Emma watched my animated video and she felt that it is Tom's story that is me. She immediately contacted the owner of the page and requested to grant my contact number. She was provided with my new email ID. Likewise, she mailed me with an apology and asked me to call her. As she wrote that she loves me too, but because I was obsessed with being a girl, she never told me. One day I saw her email and soon after I called her and we met. Emma explained herself and I forgave her. I never went home but called Emma to stay with me in a new city. Recently, I sent divorce orders to my wife and I'm waiting to get it done so that I can marry Emma. Since Emma came into my life, I don't feel like dressing up as a woman anymore. I feel complete with her. How did you like my story? Let us know by writing in the comment box. Don't forget to subscribe and share this YouTube channel. A car skidded on an oily surface and the driver lost control and came over me. I met with an accident, but before telling you how, I would like to introduce myself first. Hi, I'm Lily and I'm 16 years old. Recently, I cleared my 10th board exam. I live in a row house with my parents. I'm a single child of my parents and when I was born, I was the dearest to them. Till the age of 7. I was the weakest and dumb student in school. All my classmates were smart, studious, and always volunteered for any kind of questionnaire, test, or competition. And I always kept myself away from these. Not just with the studies, but even in day-to-day -day life. I used to behave dumb. I never felt like living life as others do. I was a boring person, and this behavior made my parents hate me. They made a hundred attempts to make me normal. They bought different toys for me. They took me for a picnic. Mom kept making delicious food for me. She kept throwing parties at home for no reason. But I used to sit idle thinking. I never participated and enjoyed anything. I never liked to play with toys or friends. Nor do I like partying or communicating with people. I even hated listening to music and watching cartoon shows or other series on TV. Before continuing, I would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel. So, one day in school, the teacher spoke about a surprise essay writing test. All were asked to write on the topic, my favorite animal. The teacher gave us a deadline of two days to complete this essay and told us to watch Animal Planet and National Geographic channels on TV. She also asked to talk with parents and gain knowledge of various animals and then write the essay. And for the first time, I felt interested in studies. As I went home, I turned on the TV and selected Animal Planet channel and kept watching for hours. My mom was shocked to see me like this, but she didn't even ask me to change the clothes and turn off the TV. She was happy to see me watching TV for the first time. I told my mom about the essay topic, and she helped me by giving knowledge of different animals. After writing the essay and knowing more about animals, I felt that all animals are my favorite. Not a specific one, hence I wrote about all the animals I knew. After two days, when we submitted the essay to the teacher, she gave me grade A because she liked that I was impartial with animals. Later, when I returned home, 
I saw a dog at my neighbor's house barking at me. I had never seen him before. I went close to him and I just fell in love with him. So I hugged him and in return, the dog started to lick me. Mr. and Mrs. Joseph were present there. They were our neighbors. Mrs. Joseph said, Looks like Paul is in love with you. I asked, Paul? Mr. Joseph said, Yes, that is his name. Since then, most of the time I kept going around him, and in a few days, he became my best friend. I started spending most of my time playing with him. I also started expressing my feelings to him. But my behavior with others was the same even now. I was still a dumb person. Soon after, my parents decided to send me to boarding school for my well-being. So the day came to leave the house. My father took my luggage and kept it in the car. My mom had a smile on her face, but her eyes were watery. We all went out to get inside the car. Oh my gosh, Paul barked horrible. My mom and dad got scared. Mr. and Mrs. Joseph and other neighbors came out to see what happened. People felt that a thief would have come. Looking at Paul, I couldn't control my feelings and I rushed to him and hugged him tightly. Finally, the time arrived to see off everyone and we moved. My parents had done my admission in the reputed school, making sure that I shouldn't face any problem. Boarding school was good in studies, other curricular activities, sports, music, physical fitness, and to my surprise, they had a small space for pet animals, which included dogs, cats, rabbits, hens, and birds. I was so excited to know this. There was a pet dog named Timmy. He was the apple of my eye. He reminded me of Paul. Years passed by and I was still the same, spending most of my time with animals. But yes, my IQ level and knowledge improved. All the tutors in the boarding had damn good patience and techniques to handle any kid. After coming to boarding school, I never visited my parents, nor did they come to visit me. We just had a phone talk. All my birthdays get celebrated along with all tutors, pets, and two to three kids. No kid liked to spend time with me due to my boring nature. So they kept themselves away from me and were never interested in my birthday party. But there was a boy who was the opposite of everyone. His name was Liam. He was a sweetheart. He was good looking, smart, attractive, and straightforward. He was very choosy about any relationship. He used to get a lot of friend requests, but he refused them. However, he was behind me to be my friend. He did everything that he could have done, giving me gifts, getting desserts for me, sharing his games, studying with me. But he failed to become my friend. Still, he never felt low. He kept noticing me and found that my life starts with pets and ends with pets. So one day, he came hopping in front of me wearing a puppy outfit. He behaved like a doggy. I wonder what he was up to, but he was looking quite funny, so I couldn't hold my laugh for long. He said, Finally you smiled. You love animals, especially dogs, and they are your friends. I want to be your friend, so I became a puppy. Oh my. My heart melted listening to that. He added, I know you are a reserved and introverted kind of person. How did he know this? I wondered. And rather than eating more footage, I just put my hand ahead to begin our friendship. And we shook hands. Three years passed happily, and by now, I had a good knowledge about everything. I was no more dumb, but smart. Still, my pets and Liam were my friends. Liam understands my introvert status. He understood that I like to stay alone and always made me engage in a talk so that I'll be calm. I started liking him as he was the only one who changed my life. When we were in grade 9, the school principal got a call from my father. She informed me that my granny is in the hospital and her condition is critical so I need to visit her. 
She wants to meet me. I remained quiet, but my eyes became watery. I packed my bag for home and was getting ready till the cab would come. That time, Liam came along with Timmy to meet me. He got the news from some of his colleagues. He was trying to console me as I was very distressed. After some time, the cab came. I was about to leave when Liam and Timmy started sobbing. Liam said that he will miss me. I patted their backs and left. All over the way, I was thinking about my granny, the time spent with her when I was young. I closed my eyes and was thinking deeply. When I opened my eyes, I found myself in the hospital and my mom and dad were around me. I asked them, Mom? Dad? Why am I here? Mom answered, A car skidded on an oily surface and the driver lost control. What? How, how is Granny? You both came here leaving her alone? I questioned. Mom replied, Dear, the day you met with the accident, Granny lost her soul. After her funeral, we came directly here. What are you talking about, Mom? How many days have I been here? My father said, Three days ago, you got a bad wound on your head and the doctor had clearly told us that you might go into a coma. By God's miracle, you are fine now. I was astounded to know all of this. Later, I got discharged and I went home with my parents. As I reached, I saw Paul jumping excitedly and barking. Suddenly, some kind of noise started entering my ears. Hey Lily, you are finally here. I asked mom, did you hear something? Mom said, no. Oh Lily, I missed you. I want to tell you so many things. Again, noise came and I shouted, who's there? Don't talk behind me. My father said, no one is here and asked to get inside the house and take some rest. Then my parents went inside the house. Looking at Paul barking, I went to him. Then I heard, keep an eye on your father. I shouted, who's that? And then my mom came out of the house and called me. I went home, but all the time I was thinking, what does that noise mean? Keep an eye on your father? The next morning, I went to meet Paul. Again, he excitedly started barking. And then I heard, Mrs. Joseph and your father. Hello, Lily, how are you? Mrs. Joseph came and asked. Paul stopped barking and looked at her. I didn't give her any answer as I was thinking about the noise again. I felt that I might be suffering from some trauma. But why does that noise say my father's name? I thought. Hence, I decided to go out at night to expose the unknown sound suspense. As I came out during the night, I saw Mrs. Joseph and my father hugging each other. I was shocked to see that. Is Mrs. Joseph and my dad dating each other? I questioned myself. That time I realized, why did each noise I heard have my father's name? But who was talking about them? I again saw them kissing each other and went into their house. I hid myself so that my dad shouldn't see me. As he went home, I came out and Paul started barking. Again, multiple noises started entering my ears. I went close to him and he started barking excitedly. Again I heard, Mrs. Joseph and your father are in a relationship. I held Paul's hand and asked, was it you who was telling me about Mrs. Joseph and my father? He nodded his head. But Paul, how could I hear you? How is it possible? Paul licked my face and I hugged him. Oh, Paul, I don't know how this happened, but I'm happy to know that I can hear you. Paul then pulled me. I immediately released him from the chain and followed him. He took me to the parking area and started barking by pointing at the CCTV camera. I asked him, does this CCTV have anything which I need to watch? He nodded his head. I went to the security guard and asked for the footage. I checked it and it had nothing but people parking their vehicles or coming and going. 
But still, I kept looking over. I thought I would check at least one week of footage. And there I saw my granny and dad talking to each other. I just took a copy of the footage and went to the lip reader the next morning. I didn't completely watch the footage. The conversation was, I'll expose you in front of my daughter. How could you date Mr. Joseph? Oh, come on, mom. It was for a few days. Now we're separate. Whatever it is, my daughter has the right to know this. All right then. But before you do that, you'll leave this world. I was shocked to hear that and watch the footage ahead. My father grabbed my granny's neck and pressed it tightly. She fell down. Then my father called his friend who was a doctor and told him the scenario. He asked him to admit my granny to the hospital with the reason that she just fainted in the parking area and my father took her to the hospital. I was stunned to know all of this. I immediately placed a complaint against my dad and doctor to the cops. I then went to my mom and showed her the reality. Then the police came and took them. My mom was uncontrollable. After she accepted the truth, she asked me how I knew about all of this. I told her that I guess I can read the minds of dogs. I can grab what they're saying by their barking. Maybe I have been with a pet dog for so many years. That's why it became possible for me to understand what Paul was trying to tell me. Then mom replied, Maybe your granny wanted to tell you about your father. That's why she wanted to meet you. As your father didn't let me stay alone with her. After then, I stayed with my mom and never went to boarding school again. Liam is still my sweetheart and we chat or do video calls occasionally. How did you like my story? Do let me know by writing it in the comment box. Don't forget to subscribe to the True Tales channel.